Welcome to Angel Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency angel assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. These next two stories we're going to talk about were two articles I was doing in the beginning from the first video that we released earlier in the afternoon. And since we had to cut it for time, I put these two into this video so we can do a live premiere. So let's jump right in. First up, analyst David Wave says Bitcoin facing one last test ahead of rise to 120,000. Like I said before, I'm not big into the Bitcoin price prediction because who really knows what it's gonna be? But there's a couple of things that Dave said in this article, which makes me extremely happy and also very bullish, also. Also, analyst Dave The Wave says, Bitcoin facing one last test ahead of rise to 120,000. And I'm not real big on Bitcoin predictions, but what he says in here really got me excited. And finally, I almost feel guilty talking about this subject, but Binance joins the DeFi craze, unveils new platform for yield farming. The reason I feel guilty is because people have been losing their shirts on DeFi and also making a lot of money for the ones who get in early. This one will probably be enormous, and I'm very weary of the whole DeFi craze, but this is the news that's out there, so I leave it to you. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So it is still September 8th, nothing really going on, and uh, not too much of a drop. Although, no, I take that back. Bitcoin is teetering on going below 10000 It's only got $5.22 to go, so we'll see what happens. Ethereum 335, Tether's Tether, XRP, yeah. Chainlink. 4% down. Yeah, 1162. Everything's down. Uh, just the couple of hours that it's taken between the first video and the second video. So not a great day. However, great day if you're looking to uh, pick up some cheap cryptocurrency, but we'll see what happens. I don't see a good resolution here. Oh, UMA up 10%. Unfortunately, down 26%. And you know what? All these these uh, 24 hour things don't really, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is what is this coin doing? Or what is this token? What is this coin? What is this altcoin? What is Bitcoin doing? And has there been really any changes? Fundamentally, has anything changed with any of these cryptocurrencies? Has anything been hacked? Has the team come out and said, you know what, we're just a bunch of scammers. Fundamentally, nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is the price. And uh, if you believe in your project and you think, you know what, in the next five years plus or however long you think it's going to take, if you believe that it's going to change the world, invest, invest. Because guess what? It's the early investors like you and me that really pay all the dividends as time goes on. And that's just what I believe. All right, let's jump into the two articles today. All right, so analyst with remarkable track record says Bitcoin facing one last test ahead of rise to 120,000. Now this, again, I'm not a big fan of the whole Bitcoin's going to this and Bitcoin's going to that because we never know. It could go, I'm not going to go say it goes to zero. That's just so dumb. It's not going to go to zero. I mean, it's not going to happen. But we don't know if it's going to go 100,000 or 800,000 or, you know, 10,000 or whatever. We just don't know. But I like this information about what Dave the Wave talks about for one reason. I'll get that right now. So real quick, in a new tweet, the analyst known as Dave the Wave said it's within the realm of possibility for Bitcoin to continue consolidating for the rest of the year. You can't see me, but I have my hands in prayer pose. I hope, I pray that Bitcoin keeps consolidating for this sweet, sweet ride when we can all just keep being investors and dollar cost average in and just pick up Bitcoin on the cheap. Because I truly believe it's not going to be 10,000 forever. It's going to go up. And I see it going anywhere between 100 and 250,000. That's just my prediction. Again, I don't like to make them because they kind of seem a little bit ridiculous right now. But look what happened in like 2012, 2013. People, I mean, it was like, you know, 300 bucks. People are like, oh, you know, Bitcoin could at some point reach $1,000. And now we look at 1000 we're like, can you imagine if Bitcoin's $1,000? What a piece of junk. So you got a dream. Anyhow, so Dave, to make this quick, he draws a nice little uh, algorithm line or lines of support and where it's going to bounce off. I'm not a TA person, so I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not even going to pretend that I know what he's talking about. But basically, it's all trend lined and levels of support. And I can see that. I mean, just going across here where he draws the lines. It's all about where you draw the lines, right? So fantastic. But it states here, Bitcoin may continue hovering above the former resistance of the triangle at the end of the 2017 Bitcoin bull run and kept the market bearish for over two years. And believe me, those sucked. But this is the interesting stuff. Dave's chart also shows that the previous resistance and the logarithmic growth curve will touch base on December 31st, 2020. According to Dave, the meaning of the two support lines can ignite a bull market that catapults Bitcoin to 120,000. Do I believe that? I don't know. But I can tell you this. I am happy i am 
ecstatic that we can continue on with this 10,000 just nothingness for as long as we want to. Wow, maybe two or three months and just accumulate. I'm all about that. That's fine because I know that Bitcoin will only increase. I had a discussion with uh, Alex Maschioli about this. He's the uh, head of the uh, Bequant Institutional Services and he gets like big players in the game. And I just asked him, I go, Alex, what are these people talking about when they talk about cryptocurrency? What are they investing in? Because Grayscale has their, their Litecoin fund, their Ethereum fund, their XRP fund. He goes, you know what they're talking about? Bitcoin, and that's it. So these big, massive players, these are the ones that are getting in, and that, I think, is what will drive the price up. Could be wrong, but who knows? But as far as like the actual price action, what's going to happen in the future, I mean, you can draw these all day long. I'm not a TA guy. I just I, I just don't uh, get into all those trends. I can take a look at price action and see what happened. And this is what I always talk about between the first halving, second, and third. Again, uh, past performance is not indicative of future happenings, however they say it. But if you look, take a look at the first halving on November 28, 2012, that was the date of the first halving. And then in a year's time, it reached an all-time high of 994 bucks or let's just say a thousand right so the price on november 28 2012 was 12 bucks and then in one year it went up a thousand that is an eight thousand percent increase so we go from the first having the second which we all remember that well some of us do uh the, the second halving happened on july 9th 2016 and the price at that time was 650 bucks pretty good then in a year and a half on december 16th 2017 it went to almost twenty thousand. so between oops so between the first halving and the second halving, yeah, by about a third. So 3,000% was the gain. So we went from 8,000 to about 3,000. We'll round it down. We'll say about a third, right? Now, the third halving happened in May. Well, actually, it was this was I actually did this in December. So I thought it was around May 16th. It was like May 11th, May 12th, somewhere around there. And I always thought it would be around 10,000. And it was around 10 grand. So I just looked at this. I'm like, well... For the first to the second, it went from a year to a year and a half. So maybe it'll be two years till when we have the next all-time high for Bitcoin. So if we take a look at that, then maybe in 2022, which we're roughly looking at about another year and eight months or somewhere around there, we can go from 10,000 to 100,000 because we went from 8,000 by about a third, 3,000 by about another third, 1,000%, 100 grand. That's a very conservative number. Who knows if I'm right or wrong? That's just what, how I see it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last article. Next up, I'm guilty for even talking about it, but I mean, we have to, right? DeFi is, uh, it's out there. And I, I'm not, nothing against DeFi, nothing against DeFi. I think it has its place. I think it's gonna be massive in the future. I think it's gonna be great for small businesses like myself and we can just, you know, uh, put up collateral and get these fantastic uh, rates and don't have to jump through all the hoops like we have to do now with the bank, which suck. So yeah, I think it has its place. Do I think this is the final iteration? No, I do not. So what's going on here? Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, has unveiled details of a new product called Launchpool. Now, this platform will allow users to stake assets and earn interest bearing rewards and yield farming. Binance is, um, they take risks. Uh, I'll just tell you this. CZ Binance, that guy is just like, you know what? Let's see what happens. Uh, he's also the guy that also listed Sushi and that was to me an exit scam. But uh, what are you gonna do? That's what they did, and uh, no risk, no reward, right? However, me, I try to minimize my risk as much as possible. I'm mostly going for sure things, and I'm not into that. Anyhow, the platform's first project is Bella Protocol, or Bell, and it will let users stake Binance Coin, ARPA Token, and Binance USD Stablecoin in three separate pools to farm Bell tokens starting from September 9th. So that's how DeFi all works, right? When you stake your tokens in this case you're going to be able to stake binance coin arpa or busd they're going to give you bell uh, just for free and if you take a loan out like hey here's your money and also here's some bell tokens it's like it's like a parting gift it's awesome however don't depend on that because we see what happened with sushi and all the rest of this stuff i know some people say ah, sushi's still around it's awesome sure i guess to me, I just think it's a very risky game, that's all. To finish up, it says, although 5% of the total Bell token supply has been set aside for staking rewards, staking Binance's BNB token will yield the highest rewards. Surprise, surprise. Specifically, users who stake BNB will earn 90% Bell rewards, 9% for staking BUSD, and only 1% for ARPA. So who's going to stake that? Come on. BNB is going to be what everybody stakes. Rewards for this project will be distributed 30 days from this coming Wednesday which is manana, 
which today is the 8th, which is Tuesday. And a week after that, on September 16th, Binance will list Bell token for trading on the exchange. Surprise. The Bella protocol aims at streamlining, because I was like, what is this? What does it do? So it aims at streamlining the DeFi experience by leveraging the one-click design. Oh, I like that. And also cutting the gas fees. Oh, I really like that. Bella co-founder and CEO Felix Zhu postulated this. At Bella, we want to bring your everyday banking experience to crypto. Interesting. The majority of crypto holders cannot participate in DeFi due to high cost and poor user experience with Bella. Users can save gas fees and time, enjoy high yield from sophisticated strategies, and leave all the heavy lifting to us. We aim to become the black rock of crypto. That's huge. I didn't I didn't remember this. Black rock of crypto. BlackRock, if you don't know, is like a, I want to say a trillion dollar. No, I know. It's like six or seven trillion assets under management, something like that. And it's a um, just an enormous firm, firm based here in the U.S. and New York uh, for asset management. So if they're saying that we want to be the BlackRock of crypto, it's a pretty lofty goals. And they want to bring 10x more users to the DeFi ecosystem. Well, that's not going to be tough because everybody's going to pile in because they want to see how much uh, free money they can make. So I don't see how this project could actually fail. I mean, it's backed by Binance. But I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And that's it. All right, before we take off, I just want to give uh, random shout outs to everybody who has joined up for Digital Asset News. Um, there's a join now button underneath. It's just a buck 99. You don't get anything special, but I just do random shout outs. So, random shout outs to Doug Lemley. Who else we got? Jaime A. We've got uh, TTP911, David Griffiths, SML, Shauna's Life. That's a good one. And then Barry Belasco. So, Thanks everybody who has uh, signed up so far. Really appreciate it. Also, if you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Uh, go ahead and click on those. Um, I don't have any control over that. It's mostly YouTube, just like the probably ad that you saw when you came in. So uh, if you don't like those ads, go ahead and talk to YouTube. They'd love to hear from you. And uh, that is it. So thanks for stopping by for the live premiere also. That's pretty cool. Really appreciate that. So uh, that's it for today. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.